Welcome back to Missing. I am Tim here today with Lance. Lance, how are you today? Doing great today, Tim. I'm really excited to listen to this episode because I wasn't on it. And you had texted after you were done and you said that this was an incredible conversation with an incredible person. So I'm excited to hear it, but I'm also excited to hear how you're doing today. Thank you. I am doing great today. Excited to bring this episode, this conversation to our airwaves. Yeah, it, it was just me and Terry. Terry is Devante Van Morgan's mom, and we had double booked ourselves, so we split up our interviews. So that's why it was just me in this one. And it was a fascinating conversation, Lance, about a guy who seems like, like a great guy. Devante Morgan went missing on May 5th, 2020 from Mount Shasta, California. He was born in 1992 in San Francisco, 5'11", 165 pounds. He's an African-American man who was 28 years old when he went missing. His mom speaks glowingly of him, says he's got a lot of friends. His nickname is Vonte, and that's V-O-H-N-T-E. The circumstances of his disappearance are, is, is kind of crazy, honestly. He, he lives in San Francisco, uh, but he went missing hundreds of miles away, and there's some confusing travel involved in the story. And I, a lot of the conversation is really kind of trying to pin down a timeline as best the, as I could uh, from Terry and uh, about this case. And it seems confusing. It seems like there could be people lying. It seems like uh, there are definitely people not being fully open about what happened to Devante. Well, again, I'm really looking forward to listening to this. And if anybody has any information, the contact would be the Mount Shasta Police Department. That's correct? Yes. And the number for them is 530-926-7540. And again, yeah, really looking forward to this. Yeah, my heart goes out to Terry, um, who is dealing with Devante's disappearance and isn't getting much help from the Mount Shasta Police Department as well. So it would be great if they uh, responded to her and didn't uh, accuse her of harassing them, which I find uh, just kind of a tragic element um, in this case. Yeah, you were telling me that after you got done that they were telling her to stop harassing them, which is unbelievable. I mean, for sure. Yeah, our hearts go out to her and the frustration she must feel knowing that the organization that should be looking into a very fresh missing person case, 2020, it was only a couple of years ago. There's still plenty of information out there. You would hope that there would be more of a relationship that is productive between the two parties. And again, I don't think that she's making that up. I don't think that that's a word she pulled out of the blue and is trying to use against uh, the police department as like a slur. I'm sure she's being very assertive, trying to find her son, and that's understandable. And we met Terry on TikTok, who messaged us and asked for some coverage. And you can follow Terry on TikTok at Mama T, that's M-A-M-A-T-E-E-415. -E -E and she's posted a lot of videos about Devante's disappearance. And again, the reason for you being on this interview by yourself is because we did double book ourselves. There have been a lot of missing persons coming to us from family members like mothers and those who are extremely close to the person. And we didn't want to postpone the one that we had been in contact with. So stay tuned for that. That'll be myself and Jennifer Amell. And Tim, if I wanted ad-free episodes of Missing, uh, where would I go? What would I find over there at missing.supportingcast.fm? Well, that is exactly the place you'd go. You can sign up for $2.99 a month. You can get every episode of Missing ad-free. And for $5 a month, you can get every episode of Missing ad-free, plus our weekly bonus show, Lance, that uh, is very entertaining. I know we brought one of those to the public airways recently so you can check that out for a sample of what you'd be getting over there weekly at missing.supportingcast.fm and we got more things on the way we're putting together our new version of this subscription service so thank you for sticking with us on this and it's going to be outstanding and worth every penny Terry, thank you so much for joining us here today we really appreciate your time thank you for having me can you tell us a little bit about Devante? The way you pronounce his name is Devante. A lot of us seem to get lazy and forget how to 
pronounce his name correctly, but I can hear him saying to me, mom, that's not my name. My name is Devante. Okay. So let's get that straight right now. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. He's my oldest child, my best friend. Everybody loves him. The whole neighborhood loves him. Um, he doesn't have any children, but he's really close with his uh, niece and nephew. He's a funny guy, very entertaining. <laughs> he has an unforgettable laugh, and he's a child of God. He loves the Lord. And how many siblings does he have? He has, Devante has, uh, excuse me, Devante has two brothers and one sister. And uh, where did he grow up? He grew up in San Francisco, California, to hate Ashbury. And has he lived there most of his life? All his life. We, All his life. we brought up, was born and raised in this one house, never left. This, he never left. Devante never left. He was always afraid uh, of leaving his surroundings. You know, he's, and at his age, I was like, oh, you know, when I was your age, you know, I would get out and I would go and see things, you know. And so I always, you know, kind of like try to pressure him to, you know, see a little bit more than San Francisco. Why was he afraid to leave his surroundings? Because of mm. missing people. He's always had this feeling that something was going to happen to him is like his worst nightmare. So he, th that was something that he spoke about his, uh, his fear of going missing. Yeah. Uh, and, and he would, he didn't want to go anywhere. Whenever we, I, I would literally have to talk him into going anywhere out of town with me. I told him if you just make sure, you know, you go with someone you can trust with that being said, he was still afraid. He still was afraid to go anywhere. That really concerned me when I got a call from him and he was in Tahoe, uh, Lake Tahoe. And so Lake Tahoe's a considerable distance from San Francisco. Yes. So what had happened was, to my understanding, what he told me when I spoke to him was uh, the girlfriend gave him one too many drinks. and. She drove off with him. She drove off with him. Mm -hmm. And he, when he woke up. With him in the car. Yeah. And when he woke up, he was in Lake Tahoe. Okay. So, so Devante and his girlfriend were having some drinks near their home in San Francisco. She gave him more than he's used to and he woke up in Tahoe? Yeah. Yes. Tell me about, uh, about his girlfriend. Filipino to my understanding. Short. The girl, you know, she seemed, everything always seemed funny to her. Nothing bothered her, you know, she was just free. Older woman, close to my age, that raised a red, red flag. You know, we saw little signs of her not being, all, to me, to us, all the way there. And we tried to kind of like tell Devante, you know, but, it, you know, I get, I don't know. Maybe he just he didn't see it. You know, we've seen several incidents where we could tell that she might have been all the way there upstairs. Interesting. And uh, w what did you try to um, like? In what way did you try to tell Devante? I tried to sit down and talk to him. We even showed him things that you know she did. You know, like my mom was in the middle of trying to sell her house, and she draws all these weird pictures on her window. And, you know, it was just weird things she would do. Not a, a normal um, adult would do. Maybe a, a, a three-year-old kid, four-year-old, but not an adult. What kind of pictures? Flowers and rainbows, butterflies. Okay. Was Devante a big drinker? Did he drink often? Yes. We, were really, we had a loss in our family, so and we had a lot of losses. So, you know, it caused him to start drinking a little more than normal. Okay. So during this period, he was grieving and um, drinking a little bit more than normal. Yes. Did those losses affect the way Devante had been feeling? Yes. And uh, his behavior and things like that too, besides drinking? Yes. Okay. In, in which other ways? Just like sad all the time and I mean, grieving, you know? I'm sorry for your losses, yeah. Thank you. 
And Devante also went missing right around the start of uh, the pandemic. Did um, yes. did the lockdown and everything like that 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 came with? Did that have some impact on his uh, mental health as well? I think so. Yes, I definitely think so. I know so. Okay, yeah, I definitely remember it being like an especially paranoid time, um, and people kind of needing to just get away in some way, just kind of try to not deal with it. Right. As far as uh, the area that Devante was in, Lake Tahoe and the Mount Shasta area, w- that was not an area that he ever expressed interest in going to or anything like that? Um, No. No. He, he never wanted to go anywhere. Yeah. No. He, ne- he never wanted to go there. I don't know. It's a little hard. I, I don't know. This interview is a little harder for me because it's been so long. And so much has happened in between. Well, yeah. Uh, feel free to um, to tell me tell me what happened uh, in between. He's been um, he's been missing okay. over two years. Yeah, he's been missing over two years, and we have gotten um, very, 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 very little help from um, law enforcement. Um, in the year twenty twenty one, a lot of people came up missing up there in Mount Mount Shasta. Recently, um, a young man came up missing and they they found him, you know? So I just feel like my son's case is just, it never got taken seriously in the first place. They let a lot of evidence go. Everything that I tried to express to them, they never, they, they never took it seriously. At um, one point, they told us they only have like eight people, eight members of the law enforcement total, and they wouldn't accept outside help. I mean, I I I I I don't know where else to go with this. My thing is like basically the girlfriend. My focus is on her because she has harassed us. I mean, everybody, um, friends, family, anybody that that probably is black, you know, from San Francisco, they might not even be related to us. I'm getting messages talking about, you know, she's harassing people. So not only the, the things that we that we the evidence that we tried to give them against her, they didn't look into it. They also um, suspected her from the beginning. And she's just. Basically, she's running around living her best life, fancy free, while stalking us. Wow. And she still lives nearby? I don't know. I I can't honestly say where she is. One minute, she could be in San Francisco. She's sighted in San Francisco. Another minute, she's sighted in um, San Diego. Sometimes she goes back up to Mount Shasta, you know, weed. And I don't, it ain't, it ain't no telling where she is. Okay. And um, was there a specific business that Devante's girlfriend was into or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell you much about her except for I mean, I know she had um, she was a single mom, supposedly, you know, with uh, children of her own. Did uh, Devante ever meet those children? Yes. Um, And you met the girlfriend and uh, a few times. Mm -hmm. And her two oldest children came up to get her up in Mount Shasta because she had a mental meltdown. Does she have a history of, of mental illness? Yes. Come to find out, she do. Okay. And uh, how long had she and Devante been seeing each other? Well, let's see. They met in July of 2019. He came up missing in May. So May of 2020. Okay. So they spent a lot of time together for those eight or so months? Yeah, pretty much every day. Every day they were together pretty much. And did uh, Devante have a lot of other friends? Yes, Devante has lots of other friends. I mean, we have a whole wider community that that came up looking for him. Good. And no one, obviously, no one, none of his other friends heard from him or knew why he was in that area? No. Okay, so this was after I talked to him. After I talked to him, after he was in Lake Tahoe, he talked to a friend and he said, told um a friend that he was thinking about going somewhere. 
thinking about. And that was the last time any of our loved ones spoke. Wait, I take that back. My um, middle son talked to him one time after that. So once um, they got to Mount Shasta, she sends, and I had the video. We oh, we could probably still find it somewhere. But she sends my middle son this video of Devante, and he's kind of like out of it. And um, she thinks it's funny. And she's saying, you know, Devante smoked marijuana. You know, he's 420, <laughs> happy, I guess. And that's probably one of the things that interested everybody about up north. She um, sent him a video of Vante kind of out of it, talking um, about look at him, you know, look at your brother or whatever. And um, she was like, up here, the shrooms are so good. And Devante hates shrooms hate shrooms she said the shrooms are so good and so mild that you could put them in somebody's blunt and you would they would never know and this video she sent it to my son my son spoke to Devonte after that and his last words to his brother was this b-i-t-c-h did it again my middle child asked Devonte, how did he get it, get up there and he said the bee did it again so basically she drugged him put uh, shrooms in his blunt and got him messed up and drove up to Mount Shasta and he woke up in Mount Shasta. Wow. Okay. So based on his statement, it sounds like she's definitely done it before too, right. obviously to get him to that point and then then, but were there other experiences? Does it sound like? Yes, she definitely done this before. You know, she said she never been up to Mount Shasta, but there's video of her on the back roads and doing some of everything. Like she knows the, the town way too well. She told me that he went up there for a spiritual healing. And when he came down, he was going to be a preacher. So from, to my understanding, Mount Shasta um, is a place where a lot of uh, people go to go get closer to God at the top of this mountain, but they never make it up there be because of all the riffraff at the bottom of the mountain. What do you mean by riffraff? I mean, just some of everything, you know. I, my my belief is if um, you believe in good and evil, where wherever good is, there evil will certainly be, will dwell. Right. Devante was religious to you as well. This was uh, not something that she had uh, made up or anything. Yeah. No. No. Devante was um I out of my four children, he was always in church on Sunday uh, on Sunday morning. He's going to be the one that's in church. Okay. And did he express interest in being a preacher before? Yes. And she knew that. Okay. So not completely out of character for him. So when, when you spoke to him last, was that when he told you that, um, he, he got drunk or, or, or that his girlfriend helped get him drunk and then he woke up up there? I said, what you doing in Mouse? I mean, what are you doing in Lake Tahoe? He was like, Oh mom, you know, <laughs> and just laughed it off like that. Okay. And uh, did he have his own phone at that time? Yes. He did? Yes. He called me from his phone, which at some point in time, she went from Mount Shasta, I mean, excuse me, Lake Tahoe, back to the Bay Area, to Mount Shasta. My nephew had um, passed away, so it was a funeral he needed to go to. So during that time, to my understanding, she told us that she threw his phone. They got into an argument and she threw it. So she broke his phone, you know, and knowing that he didn't have a phone, she took him way up into these mountains without a, a form of communication. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors. And now we're back to the program. Okay, so sorry. Let me just get the the timeline a little bit uh, straight in my head. So they, they were drinking in San Francisco. Uh, woke up in Tahoe. He still had his phone. Um, you spoke with him, and then your nephew passed away back in San Francisco. They drove back that way, and some some point during that drive is when she broke his phone. Um, sometime during that visit in San Francisco, because. Um, in the Bay Area, because the last ping is, I 
believe Oakland, California was where he last used it. And how and how soon was that before he went missing? Probably like a day before. Yeah, it had to yeah, it had to be the day before. Like around the fourth. Okay. So then they went back to Lake Tahoe and then he he his girlfriend sent the video of him to his brother. They went from from San Francisco, from the Bay Area, they went to they drove up to Mount Shasta. And that's when she sent the video from Mount Shasta. Okay, okay. I think I was getting confused thinking that Mount Shasta and Tahoe were the same, uh were in the exact same area, but they're so still a hundred or so miles between the two. At least. Okay. And uh was his girlfriend religious too? No. No, okay. No, no. Not at all. But she was encouraging Devante to um, travel alone up to the top of Mount Shasta? No. She was with him. She was with him. Mm -hmm. So she claimed, yeah. It wasn't something he was going to do by himself. She always made fun and mocked our religion. She did? Yes. That's why I'm confused why she was encouraging this uh, sort of pilgrimage, if you will, to, to Mount Shasta. Thank you. Yes. Nothing she does makes sense. So, and then she was on, she was with him on the hike at Mount Shasta to try to make it to the top of the mountain? No, they never went hiking. They never, they went never hiking. made it. They, they never, never made, made it. it. Okay. So then where did he go missing? I, I know there's some surveillance on, on the street. Okay. Um, so this yeah. is my thing. They got him on walking, on surveillance, and um, some flip flops. Not ready for hiking. Um, to my understanding, they got into a fight. Knowing Devante, he just wanted to get out of there. So they showed him walking one way on surveillance. This is the part that hurts me the most. Is I'm not going to say the most, but once they seen him walk past one way, they stopped watching the surveillance. Later on, I find out that they said, oh, well, we decided to watch the rest of the surveillance. And this was months later. Um, he walked back the opposite way 15 minutes later. So I, I don't know why. I don't, so that's another negligence on their part, because I don't understand how you can see somebody go one way and just say, OK, that's it. I'm going to stop watching the tape. Instead of watch, sitting and watching and waiting for him to go back the other way. And then once he went back the other way, there's no more, there's no more sighting of him. He just like vanished. Wow. Was he heading back towards the hotel? It looks like to me that's what he was trying to find his way back to the hotel. He was just like parallel. I've walked the, the walk so many times. He was just parallel. He was on the parallel street. But I guess um, certain parts of that area probably wasn't the safest place for a black man to walk alone. I'm sorry to have to say that. Um, yeah, I guess. What, what do you mean by that? Let's just say Mount Shasta's um, percentage um, of that black population is 1% black. Okay, so he, see, so he has an argument... With his girlfriend in the hotel room, he goes for a walk down the street, 15 minutes or so goes by, he comes back towards the hotel room. We don't know if he stopped there, but he went back towards that way and and he had has not been seen since. Okay, so this um she says this is um this is what she told us. She said her and Devante got into a fight. Um and um they separated. She went and watched the sunset, the, excuse me, the sunrise. They passed each other, and the town is not that big, you know. I mean, she passed each other, they locked eyes, and that was the last time she saw him. Would be in front of this hardware store that's probably like two and a half, maybe three blocks away from the hotel. Does that story sound right to you? No, no, it definitely don't. Nothing she says makes sense. Right. So she said at sunrise, and I, I take it it's on the 5th of May. Mm -hmm. So on sunrise, they were walking on the street, across the street, I guess, from each other, and they looked at each other but didn't say anything? 
Mm-hmm. So at this point, Devante's got no phone and no vehicle. No, no nothing. And he didn't try to talk to her per her, and and she didn't try to talk to him. So says her. Yeah, so says her. Well, that part, yeah, that that really doesn't make much sense. In, in your opinion, having been there, where where could he have gone? I don't know. I have not a clue. I know that we had friends up there, well, so-called friends. I know that they, he went and visited them, and he, they didn't tell me. When I saw them, they act like um, it was something new to them that Devante had, um, um, was in town, which it wasn't because a neighbor had spotted Devante at, his ho- at their house and, and the girlfriend at their house. So there's other people involved. And they're acquaintances of the girlfriend or their oh, like old family friends or something? Um, they're acquaintances of, my, of ours from the neighborhood. Back in San Francisco? Back in San Francisco, yes. Okay. And so, so their, their main affiliation is with you and Devante and not so much the girlfriend? Right. And De- did Devante and the girlfriend visit them when, he was, when they were up there right, right around that time? Yes. Yes. They found Devante's shoes. We um Devante's shoes was in the house. We had the police go we had to get the police to go up there because they had his shoes. She was giving away all his property. When we got there, she was giving away everything and she gave this guy a pair of um a pair of his shoes, but they he was like I didn't want them. I tried to give them back to him. So when um uh, we went to the guy is is supposed to be the acquaintance when we went to go try to get um get the shoes back, his wife wouldn't give them back to us. Wow. She snatched the shoes back and said, Devante's dead. Now, to my understanding, the guy, we're cl- more closer to, to the guy. He told me that and his girlfriend had left one night. The, the night he came up missing, supposedly he came up missing. They left that night and didn't come back until the middle of the night. She shut him up. And then after that, anytime we try to get any information out of them, they play crazy. So they they act like they don't know anything after that. Mm-hmm. The guy, um, the acquaintances from San Francisco, he has a wife. You, you know, we're not really that close with the wife. We're close with his with the guy. Actually, me and the wife don't really get along. But for Devante's sake, I tried to, um, you know, be friends with her. My friend's wife and took a ride the day that Devante came up missing. He don't know where they went. And they went early the evening and came back late at night in the middle of the night. And he was like, I don't know where they went. I don't know what they did. But he went to try to tell us everything. And the wife stopped him, was like, no, and start talking. And then we tried to get any any more information out of him. The wife already seemed to be not all the way there now he's playing crazy too so all three of them are playing like they're not in their right minds now do you have any any thought on on what a potential motivation could be if someone wanted to hurt him yes they were fighting over another girlfriend Devonte's ex his high school sweetheart you know he always stay in touch with her and I guess that um, they had been texting each other. And Jennifer was so upset about that to the point she called my mom. She called San Francisco yelling and screaming, whatever, rant, ranting and raving. The interesting part about the ex-girlfriend and th- they broke up. That was the main reason why they broke up, because he was still texting her. Um, and she broke up with Devante th- um, um, this time. Usually um, he breaks up with her. But this time she was so fed up that she broke up with him. Now, this girlfriend came up to Mount Shasta to help look for him. And then all of a sudden we thought she's driving behind us and then she dis- disappears. Just disappear out of nowhere. She won't talk to us. She won't. We, I mean, I mean, I know she ain't missing. You know, because people seen her, but she won't talk to us. She done blocked us on, on every aspect from the phones to social media. She will not say nothing to us. I don't know what happened. She was following us behind us. And then all of a sudden she disappears and she's no longer behind us. Now she has she's um have family up in the reservations up there. And um, 
She answered one time and said she was visiting family members. And after that, no communication whatsoever, which I find it really weird because she's going to communicate with my mother no matter what. And her and my daughter were best friends and she won't even communicate with her. Do you think it's possible she was threatened in some way? Yes. She did threaten her. I know she did. She told me. Oh, we know that. What did she say? You know, she's going to get her and stuff like that. Because of like sort of a love triangle or because? Mm -hmm. Definitely a love triangle. And she just hated. Okay. So, so they had disputes and she had threatened her before Devante went missing. Yes. Okay. And to my understanding, she was uh, messaging her. When they, when we were up in Mount Shasta. So do you think it's possible she got a message while she was with you, following you? That's what I, that's what I think. And we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors. And now we're back to the program. Yeah. What, what, what is next for, uh, for your search for Devante? I don't know what, what to do anymore. I need help. I need help. I need help. All the help I can get. I, 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 just, I don't know. We had a PI that got very expensive. Can't afford that anymore. And then, you know, uh, it sound like we might need a lawyer. You know, I mean, I done did everything for us, putting up fo posters and flyers and having everyone sharing. And, you know, I, I don't know what else, what else to do. One, you know, I kept calling Mount Shasta Police Department at one, I guess one point they really got sick of me and they told me to stop harassing them. They told you to stop harassing them. Yes. Now, I can't imagine you were, you were calling them harassing them. You're, you're calling them about where your son is. You know, so at this point, like I, I have no communication with them and, and, um, yeah, I I think my daughter has spoken to them, but basically they cold casing my son <laughs> while, you know, the, the suspects and people that are involved are just living their best life, you know? Wow. Are there, um, are there any areas that you can think of to search in that, in that vicinity and, and have there been any, um, any organized searches? Um, there has been. They did um, have uh, the um, search volunteers come out and look in wooded areas and the lakes and stuff, and they haven't found anything. If I, I know that this is impossible, but I would love to search some of these Indian reservations. Who knows? He he could be up there hiding. You know. I don't, we don't, we don't know, you know, maybe he's scared of this one. Maybe he knows, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It was just something weird about the ex-girlfriend coming up there and then going up to the reservation, you know, that's my hope. You know, I wish that we could search them, but I know that they do things a whole lot different than, you know, the rest of the city. Getting, they have their own government or whatever up there. I wish that Mount Shasta would accept outside help. That's what I wish. They're a small force, okay? You guys, if, if you can't handle it, if you can't handle it. I'm not saying that you can't. But if you can't help handle it, accept the help. Yeah. And who is offering help? Well, I, I know that um, the state police wanted to help, but they was only able to do so much because it, I think they said um, it's a jurisdiction thing. Yeah, I, I, de I definitely would imagine the state police have many more research, you know, uh, resources. Did the police department have any contact with your private investigator? Yes. Yes, they did. Was there any helpful information passing back and forth? No. And what kind of things were, were was your private investigator? Um, were they able to interview people? They interviewed a couple of people, yes. They had information that they perceived as helpful that they tried to turn over to the Mount Shasta police? No? No, no. Okay, well, 
is there anything else you'd like to say um, here today on this interview? Devontae being missing has really affected us all from the babies to, you know, I can't sleep at night. I need my, fr- I need my friend back. I need my baby back. And the rest of the family is having such a hard time. Our community is in disbelief. You know, this really has affected a lot of lives.